Hi, my name is John Kelly, and I'm going to be narrating this video um, this morning here. I'm going to be joined by our lead service technician, Paul Hickman, um, in a few minutes when we go to actually put power and fill the unit up. Today, we're going to be commissioning and discussing one of our hot oil systems from one of our pre-engineered product lines, the NFP series. But it is a thermal fluid hot oil system. We're going to be running that here, and uh, we have it set up right now in our service test area. Before we get into the procedures in, in filling it and going through pre-checks and uh, operating the unit, I want to just talk briefly about the installation and some practices that you might want to consider uh, when installing not only this hot oil system, but basically any thermal fluid hot oil unit. We would recommend for hot oil service using seamless carbon steel pipe and flanged all welded construction and uh, non-wicking cellular glass insulation, foam glass, uh, which is what we will be including with our system here. This is all welded B313 piping, flanged, and we're gonna put the foam glass insulation on uh, following the test uh, and after the unit has been painted. In addition to that piping, I think it's really important and it's very helpful if you consider putting high point vents at uh, different locations in your process piping, depending upon the complexity and the uh, the run lengths, etc., uh, those will aid uh, significantly in bleeding the air uh, during the commissioning process. Low point drains are also a, uh, a good consideration for uh, bleeding down the fluid at different locations, especially with more complex piping systems. Instrumentation, wherever the budget allows, the more instrumentation that you can uh, put into the piping, the better. It serves a couple of purposes. You know, one, it could just it's a quick visual check once you get the system balanced and operating, just to make sure everything is is continuing to run as designed. Or if you need to use those for troubleshooting, they're always very helpful in that process. Pressure testing your piping. Uh, Definitely do not use water for hot oil service. Everybody recognizes that industry-wide, but uh, we do run into occasions where people unfortunately do that and it presents a lot of problems. Different gases would be best. Um, ideally, inert gas like nitrogen uh, is very common, or air if you have uh, good quality compressed air. During the installation, one of the other considerations is the expansion tank. What we do on the front end of all of our our quotes and orders is select the fluid so that we can consider the properties of that fluid, the volume of the fluid, and the operating temperatures. Those three variables, uh, we can determine a calculated expansion. And that basically tells us what size tank we need to, uh, to include with the hot oil system. With that calculated volume of expansion, we want to make sure that the tank capacity is at least twice that with the idea that when we fill it up at ambient temperature, the fluid level in the tank's about 25% full, and at maximum operating temperature, or the design temperature of the system, it is no higher than 75% full. An expansion tank can be top mounted or remote mounted. Uh, the key, though, is especially if it's an atmospherically vented tank, you want it at the high point of this closed loop process. It needs to be above the hot oil system, it needs to be above your process equipment and higher than all of the interconnecting pipe. So in this case, uh, you could top mount the tank, makes for a more turnkey design if that matches you know, that practice. If you do have piping that, it, that goes up higher than the tank, unfortunately you're going to have to remove the tank from the skid, find a high point, mount it up there, and then run a connecting uh, connector pipe to the, to the system. Very critical and important that if you have to do that, the pipe that connects the expansion tank to the hot oil system can have no restrictions, no check valves, no isolation valves. What we cannot do is have the potential to isolate the electric heater from the vented tank. It presents a very serious safety concern. So in this case, this particular system, we have a top mounted tank. This is an 18 gallon tank that we're gonna be using with, uh, this is our 40 KW NFP series.